Hi, I'm Lori Forrester, the Wine Coach, and I'm a wine educator and author of The Sipping Point. And whether it's in my book or on my radio show or speaking live to wine lovers like you, my mission is to demystify wine one glass at a time. This week we'll talk about the second step in tasting, smelling. The next step after you've looked at your wine is to smell it. And this is the second real reason to swirl your wine. The first was to look at those legs, but the second reason to swirl your wine is to vaporize the alcohol so it becomes accessible to your nose. And I used to think that people swirled to be pretentious and gosh, well they just stop swirling their wine. But when you swirl, you actually allow your nose to smell that wine even better. So swirling it is important and then stick your whole nose in the glass like this. Don't be shy, don't just hover over the glass. You really need to stick your nose in there. That's why the glass is tulip shaped, to trap those aromas. And then when you do, try to think, what am I smelling? Think fruits, think herbs, think flowers, um, think earthy factors. Just close your eyes and kind of picture what comes to, to your mind. Hmm. Getting some pear here on this Kung Fu Riesling getting some peach and then even a little um, bit of a petrol sense here and I can smell some sweetness in my glass. Um, three or four things, that's fine. You know, you read a lot of flowery wine critics ratings and they might list 10, 20 things and it's really been shown in a lot of scientific studies that the brain can only really recognize four different smells in a liquid or a mixture. So don't worry if you just get two, three things that's the deal. And what's operating here is up through your nose you have something called your olfactory bulb. And your olfactory bulb is the part of your brain that recognizes smells. And think of it as a big file folder. So as you grow up you learn what a strawberry smells like and you file that away. You learn what a peach smells like and you file that away. And so that later you're able to retrieve that and identify. So if you really struggle with this stuff, if you feel like you can't be definitive on what you're smelling, then you just need to start increasing your smell vocabulary. And what I mean by that is go out and smell the roses. <laughs> For real, smell flowers, go to the grocery store, go in the produce section, smell everything there. Go to the McCormick spice rack and smell those spices. And eventually your brain will have a wider range of things to describe. Many of you, when uh, I do seminars, I'll say, well, what does it smell like? And you say, wine. Um, well, of course, but wine smells like many different things, so try to get more specific. A lot of you struggle to really take time with the smelling step, and you want to taste it. You want to bring it into your mouth because you think that your mouth is the workhorse of the tasting. But 80% of assessing taste in food and wine is done through your nose or your olfactory. So continue tasting, and you'll continue learning. Cheers! If you like the tips in this video, I invite you to join my free newsletter list. Just visit thewinecoach.com, put your email in the sign up box, and you'll get these two free gifts from me. I hope to see you there. Cheers!